Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be factoring quadratic expressions using area models. We're going to start off with this example, x squared plus 4x plus 3. Our first area model is the x squared. It has an area of x squared, which means that it must have lengths of x and x. So this is actually a square, and its area is x squared. Remember when we're finding area rectangles, we're just doing length times width. Our next rectangle has an area of x, which tells us that the sides must have lengths of 1 and x. Then we also need a unit model, so we're going to do a square of sides of 1. So 1 by 1 square gives us an area of 1 square unit. Now for our example, we needed 4 x's and three units, and the x squared. So notice that when we put all this together, we have another rectangle, a larger rectangle. Now that larger rectangle has the same area as the sum of all those pieces. So its area must be x squared plus 4x plus 3. Let's test that out. One side of the large rectangle has a length of x plus 1, the other side of the large rectangle must have a length of x plus 3. So when we multiply the two sides together, the length times the width for the larger rectangle, we should get x squared plus 4x plus 3. So let's check that by foiling it. So foiling, we're going to take our first terms and multiply them together, and we get x squared. Our outer terms gives us x, and our inner terms gives us 3x, and that adds up to 4x. And then multiplying our last terms together, 3 times 1 gives us 3. So this is correct. Let's try another example. We have x squared plus 5x plus 6. So we have 1x squared. We have 6 units. And I arranged them as 6 by 1. We could arrange it as 2 by 3 also if we wanted to. But we'll see what happens if we do this. Now our idea here is to form a rectangle out of all the pieces. So I have to put at least one on below the x squared. And then I put the remaining ones on top of the green ones. Now notice that it didn't form a rectangle. So this is not the proper way to factor this particular expression. So let's try another way. We've got our x squared, but this time I arranged my units in the 3 by 2 dimensions. Now when I go to put the other 5 x's in, it forms a rectangle. So now I know I factored it correctly. One side of this rectangle has a length of x plus 2, and the other side has a length of x plus 3. So when I multiply x plus 3 and x plus 2, I should get x squared plus 5x plus 6. Go ahead and FOIL that to check your work. So you have x times x is x squared. x times 3 and 2x gives us the 5x. And then 2 times 3 is 6, so we have the 6 here. So you can see that it's working. All right, let's look at x squared plus 8x plus 12. We have 1x squared. We have 12 units and I arranged them as 4 by 3. We could also use 2 by 6 or 1 by 12. And then I'm going to try to form a perfect rectangle by using the 8x's. But notice that I have 1 x extra x, so this doesn't work. So we're going to try another arrangement for our units. So we have our x squared. This time I chose 12 by 1 and I had to fill in the one below and then I put the rest of them beside the x squared and I didn't have enough. So this doesn't work either. Let's try again. So we have x squared and this time I arranged it as 2 by 6 for my units and when I go to fill in the remaining with the 8 x's I fit perfectly and made a rectangle. Now this rectangle has a length of x plus 2, 
and another length of x plus 6. So when I multiply those together, I do get x squared plus 8x plus 12. Check out um, that solution by foiling it. Okay, here's our next one. This time we have 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. So we have 2x squared models. And this time we have 7x models. And then we need to fit in the 6. Notice that the x's came in first. So we're trying to arrange those x terms so that we form a perfect rectangle. And the way that we're doing that is because this time we have this 2 in front of the x squared, we're actually using what's called the AC method, where we're multiplying the first term, the leading coefficient, which is the a term, by the c term, which is 6, which gives us 12. And then we're looking for factors of 12 that give us 7. And in this case, I had 4 and 3. So what I did, instead of starting with the units, I'm starting with the x's. And I'm arranging those so that I have a product of 12. And I had 7 of them. So I have 3 and 4. 3 times 4 gives me 12. And 3 plus 4 gives me 7. And then the 6 that are remaining fit in perfectly. So this rectangle, the larger one, has lengths of 2x plus 3 and x plus 2. And we can multiply that together to work it out. So if you have 2x times x, you get 2x squared. 2x times 2 gives us 4x, which is these four that are grouped here. And the 3x are these that are grouped together here. And that's going to add together to give us a 7. And then we have the 6 remaining. Let's try another one. We have 3x squared plus 7x plus 2. So this time we're starting off with 3x squared. And we want to arrange the 7x so that it forms a perfect rectangle when we add the two units left over. So we're going to take the 3 times 2, and that's going to give us 6. So that tells us that we need to arrange them in groups of 6 and a group of 1. Then I have the remaining two left over. So using the AC method really helps us to factor these. So we have a side of length 3x plus 1, and another length of x plus 2. So again, multiplying those together, you should get 3x squared plus 7x plus 2. So taking the 3x times x, we get 3x squared. The 3x and the 2 gives us the 6x, which is our grouping of the 6 here. And then the 1 times x is our grouping of 1 by itself and 1 by 2 here. So it seems to be working out. Okay, thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math.